Welcome back, traders, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. I'm Brianna Valeski here with Joel Elkana, and we have David Fabian on the line. He's a managing partner at FMD Capital Management. It's a fee-only registered investment advisory firm specializing in exchange-traded funds, so we'll get a little bit of a different view talking about some funds with David. How are you doing this morning, David? I'm fantastic. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your history and how you came to be a managing partner at FMD. Sure, absolutely. I, you know, I've uh, been in as an investment advisor for about the last eight years. I actually started my own firm with my brother about three years ago now. Uh, we really specialize in exchange-traded funds. We build uh, several actively managed portfolios for our clients. So we, uh, you know, construct growth, income, uh, specialized portfolios and the like using uh, a variety of ETFs and, and core and strategic positions and the like. And uh, felt like we could share some ideas with you guys this morning. Absolutely. Well, what is at the top of your radar then? Probably the number one thing and, and uh, sort of a breakout area that we're seeing here in 2015 has been solar stock. Uh, the Guggenheim Solar ETF TAN, it's just actually 29 stocks, but it's already up 26% so far this year. Uh, it's made up of stocks like First Solar, Sun Power, Sun Edison. Uh, these have been in the, uh, the news a lot, actually, in the uh, first two months or so of the year. A lot of uh, new deals announced, a lot of uh, interesting things going on with those businesses. Uh, and I think TAN has just done a fantastic job of breaking out. It was kind of a lagger last year. Uh, and, you know, certainly if you're looking at getting into it at these levels, it's a little bit of a chase um, up here. But I think if we've got a pullback or a little bit of a consolidation in solar stock, this is going to be a, an excellent area. There's still a lot of room in the chart to move uh, quite a bit higher from here. And so that's an area that we're monitoring for our clients. We actually don't have exposure to this area right now. It's kind of gotten away from us in a very short period of time. February was just a huge mover in this ETF. But uh, it's an area that I'm watching and an area I'd like to get exposure to uh, under the right setup. Do you have any exposure to any any oil? You know, oil has certainly been an interesting area of the market. I'm not a huge fan of actually investing in uh, the commodity itself. You know, a lot of people are talking about USO on social media and, and uh, how that has done. Um, but I think that there's a better opportunity in the in energy sector stocks. So if you look at even just the broad-based energy select sector, Spider XLE, we saw a double bottom there towards the end of 2014, beginning of 2015, and it's been strengthening up ever since. Uh, right now, XLE is trading right near its 50-day moving average. I think this is uh, it's it's uh, you know roughly uh, you know three four percent off of its uh, 2015 high here. You know this could potentially be a good spot to look to add a little bit of money to energy stocks. Uh, for another ride higher. If we do see, again, more consolidation uh, in the price of oil, if we see a, a little bit of a liftoff here, a little bit more stabilization, that's going to be very bullish for that sector. And certainly it's a, a very much of a beaten down value area of the market. So folks that are looking to get exposure to the energy area might want to consider an ETF like that. Do you use uh, technical and fundamental analysis when looking at these ETFs? We do, uh, primarily technical, you know, very much, uh, you know, have a background in, in uh, reading charts and, and seeing what's going on there, very much trend followers. Uh, you know, when, when I look at the chart of the market, I'm, I pay attention to what's happening with the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average. Those are sort of the primary indicators that we use. As I mentioned, like with energy, it's kind of pulled back, it's kind of consolidating right around that 50-day, and we're actually starting to see the 50-day turn up a little bit there, which is a, a bullish sign as well. So if we see some of these uh, moving averages start to turn a little bit higher here and we start to see uh, a little bit more momentum build in, this could potentially be a good trade uh, for investors over the next 6 to 12 months. David, why ETFs? Uh, you know, like something like USO has a natural decay in the role. Why do you choose? Yep. Why do you choose? I mean, they, and uh, if they, Dennis was on, he would have a couple more things of why he likes to use ETFs as intraday trading vehicles. But for the long term, there's a lot of natural decay uh, built into them. Uh, what give us the flip side of that? Well, I think, you know, certainly in the commodity space, you're absolutely right. I, I don't like using a, a fund like USO if you're investing in oil. I'd actually prefer, you know, if, if somebody, uh, you know, really pressed me and I was going to take a vehicle to trade oil, I would more than likely pick the OIL, the uh, IPAS ETN that tracks that index. 
you don't have to deal with the tax consequences of owning USO. You don't have to deal with, as you said, some of the decay and things like that that you get with, with those underlying indexes that actually own a basket of stocks with OIL. You're, you're owning, uh, you know, basically an index that, that Barclays is promising to track for you over time. So it's a little bit of a different structure in that nature. But from a general stance, stance, the reason we love ETFs, of course, you know, they're very liquid, they're easy to trade, they're low cost, they're diversified, they're global. You know, I can go on and on about, you know, why, you know, we, we use those as the primary building blocks of our portfolios. But with an individual stock, you know, you have to get the right company, you have to get the right sector, you have to get the right timing. There's a lot of things that have to come together there. Uh, and of course, over the last several years, uh, you know, investing in, in, you know, large stocks is, you know, many people have done quite well. It seems like it's been a very easy time. But as we enter into, you know, a different phase of the stock market up here near, you know, all time highs, it's, I think gains are going to get harder and harder to come by. And so picking individual stocks is going to be a, a much more difficult game. Whereas if you own a diversified ETF with two or 300 positions, even just broad market positions as core holdings, you know, those can, uh, you know, still perform quite well. And then certainly, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of people I run into, you know, use both individual stocks and ETFs in their portfolio, depending on their trading or investing style. So there's a lot of different ways you can mix and match these vehicles in your portfolio. And I think that especially in some of the niche areas, we're seeing a lot of that, you know, interesting new ETFs come out to the market. Uh, there's some very interesting new biotech ETFs, that new cybersecurity ETF. There's a lot of things going on where you're getting almost stock-like exposure into these very niche areas, uh, with, you know, with, with even as few as, uh, you know, 20 or 30 holdings in them. But you're, you're getting a very unique index that you're able to track and, and more diversification than just owning a single stock. Uh, I want to ask you about TLT here. Uh, this is sitting, mm-hmm. this is an interesting chart here. Uh, big pullback off the highs, little rebound rally, 130, and now... Now you're just sitting on the lows of the move, and I think we're traded down in the pre-market as well. Uh, you know, interest rates aren't really going anywhere. What's your take on TLT? Yeah, you know, interest rates are a big thing that we follow. The majority of the money that we manage are you know, income-oriented assets, so we really follow what's going on in the bond market very closely. And what we've seen, I actually wrote an article about it in January, is we were seeing this kind of over-enthusiasm for treasury bonds. You can see they really shot higher there on the chart. Uh, TLT got all the way up into that 137 and a half area. Now it's sort of pulled back uh, closer to about 126. I think this is a very important level uh, for this index. Uh, you know, long-term treasury bonds, certainly a, a fantastic area of the market to own in a deflationary environment, but we're just not seeing that right now. I think the market's finally starting to wake up to the fact that we may uh, be looking at a 2015 rate hike here. Uh, whether you know whether that's in the mid part of the year or, or closer to the third or fourth quarter, I think that the Fed is starting to get uh, you know to, to lean in that direction. And so, if we do start to see that happen, we're going to see interest rates spike, spike, and of course, bond prices go lower. Um, you know, right now, I'm I'm really staying away from investment grade corporates, treasury bonds, mortgages. You know, we think that we're a little bit late in this cycle here. If we see a little bit more of a consolidation, um, you know, the, then you know, maybe we'll look to reallocate to these areas. But I think, that, you know, from the fixed income side, there's better opportunities in high yield credit, credit, emerging market bonds and other areas. Um, but of course, with fixed income, you always want to stay balanced. You want to have a little bit of, uh, you know, a mix of assets in your portfolio so that you can, uh, you, you're, you're not overweight one single area. So as far, you know, coming back around to TLT, I think the 126 level is extremely important to watch. If it breaks that level, uh, definitely watch out to the downside. We be in for some more, uh, you know, downside there in TLT. Could potentially come all the way back down to the 200-day moving average, closer to that 120 level, uh, and you know that would really be in response to, you know, either either higher equity prices or potentially a uh, you know a looming threat Fed rate hike. Social media ETF S O C L here. Really kind of quiet here. Last few sessions, uh, well, going quite a bit here. Consolidation here between 1850 and 19. Are you in this? Looking for a breakout? How you plan it? You know, it's it's interesting. I, I don't own this ETF right now, but it's one that I watch very closely. It's very much a fracture index. SOCL has 34 holdings, you know, very well-known names like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, you know, those have really been the industry leaders, but it's also got some very big laggers as well. 
uh, companies like Yelp and Pandora. Those charts just look awful. And so we're seeing this tug of war within the index that's just kind of causing it to go absolutely nowhere. So I think, you know, when, when you come back to that whole uh, debate about individual stocks versus ETF, if I was going to be trading the social media space, I'd probably be looking more individual stocks in this area. Um, as I said, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, these are, these are companies that are, you know, continuing to innovate, continuing to, you know, the stock prices are continuing to trend quite well. Um, and, you know, staying away from some of the underperforming areas of that market so that you're not, uh, you know, kind of, kind of just getting pulled sideways like you see in that chart of, uh, social. So, you know, it, it, I don't think we have a strong edge here one way or the other. And so that's why I'm not playing with ETF at this time. Okay, and uh, Twitter here uh, consolidating after the big move up. Uh, how are you playing Twitter here? You know, it's an interesting um, chart. You know, as you said, you know, after that earnings, it had a huge move. Now it's kind of just you know sliding sideways. You know, I think a lot of people are kind of waiting to see where it breaks out of this wedge. I don't have a strong conviction one way or the other where it goes. It's kind of trading right in the middle of this chart. Certainly, it, you know, has the potential to shoot all the way up to that 56 area. And, um, you know, could come back down to sort of retest some of those moving averages as well. You know, the 200-day moving average and the 50-day moving average are kind of converging right at around 43. It hasn't shown a huge uh, propensity to, you know, pay attention to those averages in the past. But there's, uh, you know, obviously a lot of, of trading going on in that stock and, and um, you know, some interesting things. So I, I wouldn't say I have an edge one way or the other, but uh, certainly an area that, you know, a lot of people are watching. How about the biotechs? IBB been on a run here. Uh, is this you're in? Are you protecting profits? How are you playing uh, the biotech index? Biotech has just had a, an unbelievable move, and uh, you know as we see the market open up here this morning, it's it's uh, you know off to the races here again, up almost two percent. IBB is the industry leader, of course, in this sector. When you when you talk about ETF, they've got the eight billion in assets under management, market cap weighted fund. It's up about you know. Yeah, anywhere from 12 to 13 percent so far this year. You know, it's a, it's a strong trend that always continues to perform well. I don't actually own biotech directly for my clients. I'm, I own more of a broad-based healthcare fund. But in the biotech space, as I kind of mentioned before, there's some very interesting new indexes that we're seeing come out. And IBB is actually not the best performing uh, ETF in the biotech space so far this year. We're actually seeing a new ETF that was just recently released about three months ago. It's called the ALP Medical Breakthroughs ETF. The ticker symbol is SBIO, SBIO. Um, released at the end of 2014. It's had an extremely strong year. It's made up of about 75 small and mid-cap biotech and pharmaceutical companies. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't have a ton of assets under management yet. Uh, you know, kind of a reasonable expense ratio, but an extremely strong chart. And uh, they just had a, a huge year here so far. So, uh, you know, I'd certainly encourage investors to kind of look for some of those niche areas. This could be a potential ETF that you pair with a large cap oriented position like IBB if you wanted to have a couple of different holdings in your portfolio. And so, you know, that could be a potential way to play this index. Okay. All right. Any final thoughts on the market here? A uh, little bit of scare yesterday, had a breakdown came back up, flirted with uh, 2100 pre-market trading here. Uh, give us your outlook for the short-term and long-term outlook just for the broad market. Absolutely. I, I think you really said it there. The 2100 level it seems to be an extremely important spot for uh, for the S&P 500, um, you know, 210 on SPY. We're really seeing a lot of gyrations around that level and, you know, concern from the consolidation here. Right now, we're still considering, you know, pullbacks to be buying opportunities within the context of a bull market. Uh, we really haven't seen a breakdown, you know, below the 200-day moving average since this, uh, you know, that last sell there in, back in October. That was really just a short-term dip. But you know, if we saw another, you know, three, four, five percent correction like we saw in January, I'd probably be a buyer there uh, as long as the primary trend continued to hold up. So I, you know, we're continuing to hold all of our, uh, you know, large mid-cap exposure for our clients. We believe that those are, you know, extremely good areas, strong areas of the market to be in. And, you know, we're, we're uh, just let price dictate where we go from here. So we, we still have a bullish outlook. And uh, until price changes and, and we see some, you know, new uh, fundamentals come to light, we're uh, continuing to hold on to that play. 
Okay, David Fabian, Managing Partner at FMD Capital Management. He uh, writes a daily column for Benzinga on ETFs. You should check out his website and his trading strategies. They sound pretty good to me. David, thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, David. I appreciate it, Joel.